All right. How you guys doing? I'm going to talk about and hang out with and mess around with the uh, MPC 2000 XL. Um, I just painted this thing because I had an extra cover and uh, it was all messed up. So I just sanded it down and, and gave it a paint job. And it's cool. I love it. You, there's no more information though. So you got to know what the buttons are um, before you would do something like this. Otherwise you can, you know, look at a picture of one and memorize it that way. Um, and basically I'm using a, um, it's an SD card. Little guy in there, see the little fucker in there? Um, and it's two gig and it actually holds two gigs, meaning this, this MPC will read two gigs of information which I think is totally cool, meaning that you can put maybe even a four gig card in there and you can access it. So if you go to um, load, which is shift three, then you get a little menu. Okay, so here's your load screen, right? Now, if you want to navigate on your card, you head over to there where it says root and then you would if you hit your orange button which is the open button it'll give you what's on root so I have three one two four five and six folders right and these are just folders with different samples and different project files five so let's say that six is good um, let's explore though. So let's open that and let's go up to five and then let's say open and now we're on five and then let's go to um, scroll over to all programs. Let's go back. All files. Programs. All program files. There's one in there. MIDI. All sequence and songs. There's one in there. So I usually do the all programs. You can do two things here. You can load just a program file, which there's um, whoops, there's one in there. Just whatever that it says, S O M I S O, SOMISO. <laughs> and then, or if you have multiple program files, there's this thing called all program files, which will save all of them at once either way and then it's the same for the sequences you can do an all sequence file so if you want to save them all at once easy or you can just do uh, sequences I believe they're just the MIDI no they're not there it is sequences so I save the all sequence file so also if you go to sound files there's nothing in there but if you go to wave files there it is I do the wave game, meaning that I like to save and work with wave files over what they call sound files. Those guys. Dot SND. Because wave files are common. And I don't even know what an SND file is and how to play with that one. I don't even bother with them. But the thing is, here, let's go ahead and load some some stuff up here. So I'll do all program files and then you hit your do it guy and you say load Doink. okay now that's gonna take a little while um, the thing about when you go to save a program file it's gonna default to the sound format SND so you actually have to physically change it to the WAV format if you want WAV files Otherwise, it'll it'll even take if you start out with waves, it'll save it as sound files. So you have to make sure that the it's always uh, that the WAV is always checked if you want to go um, wave files. So this guy's going to be loading, and um, that's kind of the the structure and the hierarchy of 
you know this thing okay so it's done so let me then go ahead and go to the sequence files and then just hit do it wherever that is do it and then say load okay that's done then you hit your escape guy or your this is the um the go to the main window from anywhere all right so i have i haven't listened to these in a while these are old um sequence two so i have two sequences on here Okay, so this is a, a seven bar in six four timing. So that's a little strange. And we have tracks, six tracks, piano, bass, ride cymbal, hat, kick snare, wood block. So I actually bothered to name the tracks. I usually don't do that. But that's one cool thing, and to do to name your tracks, you just scroll down and you hit the open guy. You have to stop the sequence though, actually. You hit the open guy, and then you can name it there. And you can either use your, your scroll wheel here, or you can use the pads which have attached to them A, B, C, D, E, F, H, I, J, K, L, M you know three letters and you just tap you know one two three and you know I don't really use that use that because I don't do a lot of naming so I just when I do I just do the scroll wheel that seems to work fine for me so we cancel that and that's how to, how you do that now let's get back to programs because programs are kinda what I want to talk about in this video so if you go to if you select um, shift and one two three four five six shift six is your program menu that's where you get into it and you have in your overall you have four drum they're like containers I think of them as containers drum one two three and four which then you can have you know different programs so drum one can be you can assign programs to drum one so you can have you know many different programs in drum one and a program holds um, the sounds plus your mixer settings which are here which would be um, shift whatever that would be one two three four five seven and and then you would hit your you know drum one and then here's your mixer now the A01, A02, A03, A04, A05, 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 that refers to the bank. That's A, B, C, and D. A01 is the first pad. 02, 03, 04, 05. 0. So that's kind of how that works. These don't refer to tracks. These have nothing to do with tracks because there really are no tracks like we think of them in a DAW it doesn't work like that it works with MIDI notes so A01 is basically refers to a MIDI note which which is assigned to this pad or this pad is assigned to so this controls the volume of the MIDI note which is you know a pad refers to a pad so if I wanted to adjust that you just go to your scroll wheel and you can you know this is just volume and then if you wanted to go pan, tap up to that, and then you get your pan over here. And that's with the scroll wheel as well. And that's cool. Now, the individual, that that's stereo. Let's see here, yeah, stereo. And then if you wanted to go to the, you know, individual, you have to have the eight out card, which I do. Otherwise, this does nothing. So in this one, you have, you can assign those pads to an individual out which is cool I usually don't use those though effects send is only if you have the effects card built in and you have distortion filter modulation echo and reverb and these are pretty good these are pretty good um, if you want to get into here so you just hit your open guy the orange button 
once you select the reverb and then it gets into large hall, small hall, large room, small room. All right, so you have a gated and a reverse, which is cool. Um, then you have the time 51, a pre-delay 50 milliseconds, diffuse 90, um, low frequency damping, high frequency damping. I don't know what the near is. Maybe that's how near you are. And then each, each preset has those settings. So mixer, distortion mod X, so you can actually have direct signal on. So you can just have the effect going without the direct signal. Patch. Well, okay. See, I haven't mixed around in this one. Let's see what this does. Ooh, you can mess with the order of them. That's rad. I personally like my reverb to last, echo second to last, and the modulation. That's kind of how I like it. You can have the output be 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8. That's for the card. That's for the output card, the extra card. Or just left and right, which is the standard outputs. Your level pan and then WID, I don't know what that is. Okay, so you can pan the effect without messing with the actual channel. That's cool. All right, middle means middle. All right, so you have level, how much, pan, left and right, and then this guy, WID, that's just for the echo. How wide it is, maybe? I don't know, I'm guessing. I shouldn't be guessing. But that's the mixer page. And you close that. Okay, back to the reverb, close that. Okay, now you can also turn these off and on with this little off on button. So now there's nothing, now there's reverb. And you can go on off to the echo as well. Uh, hitting that guy. And to all of them. And they all work pretty good. The distortion's pretty cool too. Um, so let's go back. So drum one, we're in the effects end. So that's the effects. And you have two, you have the stereo mixer and you have the effects send mixer so that you can take a pad, you know, one pad, whatever it is, doink, doink, doink. All right, let's go with this. So we have, this is A1. Okay, now we have no effects end. If we go to the stereo guy, okay, we can see it's pretty much almost full volume. And let's go to the effects send. Let's say, okay, let's send it. Okay, so you have edit multi effects F1 right up here, F2, reverb one, reverb two. So you have four preset effects scenarios. You have multi effects one, which is all the effects. And then you have multi effects two, and you can set that differently. And then you have reverb one, you can have two reverbs and two multi effects, which is completely cool. So then you go back to effects send, and up here you have multi one, multi two, reverb one and reverb two. So let's just go multi one. And then let's scroll down and get and send it to it. Okay. And then we'll go back to the effects edit and say, okay, multi effects one, which is that, is right now just a reverb. But to hell with reverb, let's do an echo. Okay, so it's gonna default kind of feedback zero, see? So you need some feedback. So if you put the feedback up to let's say not 99, but like 70. Now that's left and right. So the feedback goes down. You get less of it. But if you want more volume, you go back to the um, to the send, and you just give it more volume. And if you want to give it all, you can lessen the volume on the stereo. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. Um, there are some limitations. So in the echo, the max delay time is 335 milliseconds, right? Which is basically a third of a second. Which is not the, I mean, you can hear. Da, 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 da. So 
you know, I was doing a tune a little earlier and I slowed the tune down and then the delay I had, because I kind of had some heavy delay on a keyboard part, and it was already at 335, so I had to speed it back up because I couldn't slow the late delay down to match the song anymore. So there is some limitation there. 335 is not that long of a delay. The sound quality is great. The delay is killer. I have no problem with the, with the delay there. Um, let's check out modulation and see what that does. And let's take out the delay. All right. So let's go back to modulation, open that up. Now we have chorus, rotary speakers, uh, auto pan, pitch shift. So you can tune things, which is, I guess, cool. So the left channel will be higher. And I guess on a, um, a drum, you're not going to get that much out of it. If I go to something else here. There we go. Okay. So standard piano. Let's go back to... Um, let's go back to uh, drum one. Oops. Okay. So there's that. And then we're going to go to um, there. And then we're going to say, okay, give that some love on M1. That's an effect sound. Now we can... Okay, so, this, so the pitch shift is definitely working on that. If we go to the effects edit again and go to the mod and say open, and now we have the left. Now I'm sorry I don't have this in stereo for you guys. It's coming off the camera. But just trust me, the left side is higher than the right. We can take the right and go lower. But that's the pitch shift, so you can do wacky stuff with that. Pitch shift plus feedback, so I guess you're getting a little bit of delay in there. Yeah. Let's see here. How high does that go? It only goes to 275. So. Okay, so then the delay is the, the, the shift actually has a delay on it. Yeah. So there's the delay for the shift. So, pitch plus feedback is pretty cool. Um, that's it for modulation. Chorus, let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, man, it's got chorus on it. So if you want to speed that puppy up and make it nice and deep. So that's the chorus, and you have phase shift, check that out, similar, flange, let's see here, so you can get as crazy as you want. Um, so there you go, you have from the start phase shifter for the modulation, flange, chorus, rotary speakers, which might be cool. Let's see here. Speed, depth. All right, that's kind of cool. Get a little rotary speaker going on. All right. Uh, next would be auto pan F mod. Let's see what that sounds like. Depth feedback speed auto pan up. All right, so there's that, and then it's pitch shift, which we already did. Pitch shift for feedback, which is a little bit of delay, and that's it for the mods. So let's get out of the mod section here. And then let's get that off, and then we'll go to filter. Let's see what that's all about. That's just basically an EQ. But that's kind of what that looks like. I'm not going to waste too much time on that. Okay, so there's the filter. Sort of. I didn't really get into it. Sorry about that. The distortion's pretty cool. I've messed with this before. So you have uh, boom, 
distortion. Yeah, getting a little crunchy. Yeah, we're getting a little crunchy here. Getting a little bit crunchy. All right. You can tune the fucker to be at the same pitch as your tone. So it's like, all right, so if we turned off the distortion, like just set the gain, no, we're not going to get anything. So as you can see, you can do some crazy shit with the distortion because it has a ring modulation in there. And you can tune it. And you can the depth of all that is 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 tunable. So that's kind of that. And then if you go to the um let's turn that off. And if you go to the reverb one, it's just a reverb. And if you open that up, I believe it's all the same stuff. So that's kind of the mixer thing. The mixer thing is stereo, individual, which are the individual outs, the eight out card, effects send, right, for what you want to send to where. Setup, here, let me get rid of this. All right. Setup is a little bit of, so stereo mix source program, individual effects source program. Copy program mix to drum, yes. Record mix changes, no. So also on this thing, it's cool. If you set that to yes, this guy, boom. What happens is that when you're in record and you go and you're playing your beat and you go to the mixer, you can record pan moves and volume moves. All right, I'll show you. Okay, so we're on kick snare. We go back to the mixer guy and then select drum one. And then there we are with our snare. Now if we, if we hit overdub, which is our first little red button there. Anything we do here is gonna, so listen to the snare. That's not me. So it's being automated. Okay, so there's the automation for uh, the mixer, if you have that selected. Now, so you can do the, the effect sends as well as the stereo volume and pan. Okay, so you can't, you cannot automate the effects themselves. You can only automate the mix. So we've determined that you can only automate the levels and the pans, but not the actual send group, the M1, M2, R1, R2, or the effects themselves. Can't do that. All right, so that's enough on the mixer section. That's a pretty good fucking doink on that. All right, so if we go back, the MPC itself is to me it's pretty simple it's a simple device that has a lot of power because of its simplicity um, i have a machine too um, that is cool but it's attached to the computer and you're in daw land so this is a standalone guy especially if you get something like that 
which is an SD card reader writer where you can just put two gigs of stuff on your SD card and then just choose from it. You can only do 32 megs at a time, but that's kind of enough to get her done, I think. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.